think the money is in the list, think again. The real money is in the follow-up. Without a great back-end to support your pipeline efforts, you'll wind up with a huge list of names that do little but cost you money. And nowhere is that more true than with a high-ticket offer. In this episode, I'm focusing on a B2B prospecting strategy that isn't all about building a big list. You may be surprised. Welcome to the Leverage Business Podcast, where we believe business success is about working smarter, not harder. Leveraging your time and expertise in ways that fit the digital age you and your clients live in today. I'm your host, Jay Allison, author of Leverage Consulting in the Digital Age and founder of the iSuccess Business Academy. And every week I'll be sharing insights into how you can apply the power of leverage to grow your consulting, coaching or other expert services business and create true freedom and independent success with mindset, marketing and money model breakthroughs. Because when you get leveraged, the sky's the limit. Let's go for it. Hello, welcome back. Good to continue the conversation about getting corporate clients where we left off last week. In the last episode, I talked about getting in front of the right people, starting with working out who that is and when's best to contact them. And today we're approaching B2B prospecting. And today we're approaching B2B prospecting from a slightly different angle. When you're selling into organizations, you will need a working list of people to approach. But I'm talking about building a pipeline of contacts rather than building a big email list. There is a subtle difference. A lot of people latch on to the marketing advice that the money's in the list. The more people you have on your list, the more revenue you're going to make. It's a bit of a myth in many ways because it really depends on who the people are who are on your list. And in the case of corporate contacts, they generally don't roll with mass automated emails, webinars and funnels in general. So if the money is not in the list, where is it hiding? Well, in actual fact, the real money is in the follow up. And this is great news if you're looking for corporate clients because you work with people within and across an organization. Because a good B2B prospecting strategy is much more focused on outreach and personal relationship building but you do still need a list of contacts to work from, a pipeline. Let me talk about building a pipeline versus building a list. Think about it, list building sucks. You spend time and money and a lot of it putting out really great content just to get someone to engage and then you spend lots of work crafting great emails to nurture them, creating sequences over several days, weeks, months, sometimes for years. And you think that maybe, maybe one day they're ready. In the meantime, your email provider charges you a ton of money for having thousands of leads on your list. And that's all fine and dandy if you're in a business where that slow burn works and it's all profitable and doesn't involve you in fielding questions from low rate prospects who will probably never buy from you. Now, look, don't get me wrong. Even for B2B, you need a list of people to contact, as I say. And whether you're using a proposal or a front end giveaway, you'll need to invest some time, energy and possibly money to identify people to approach. If you're doing digital marketing, between the funnel work, writing copies, setting up the infrastructure and promoting some list building giveaway, it's a heck of a lot of effort and isn't really that effective in a B2B context. But if you're building a pipeline of highly targeted leads and you spend a little time doing your homework on the company and sifting and sorting, those people you do contact will be much more pre-qualified. So you can focus your efforts on actually contacting the best B2B prospects at the top end of your pipeline. I still just use a simple spreadsheet for doing this. I have columns that help me rank and then sort, and I'll then send my proposal in batches of 10. I may customize each one to really draw out the match to what they're looking for. The way to make up for all the effort of marketing is really to create a solid, profitable back-end offer, a high-ticket offer, and implement a consistent outreach strategy to bring in sales and contracts dependably every month. But let's say you are doing content marketing. You're putting thought leadership pieces out there on your website or on LinkedIn, for instance, or using a CRM, a customer relationship management system to capture contacts that come in from networking or a downloadable report. 
you may well gather up names and contacts that way too and pop them in the CRM. So you're constantly refreshing and refilling your pipeline. What I've noticed talking to my B2B business acceleration clients is this. There's a lot of business that gets lost down the gap between someone opting in to join your list or you adding to them, them to your contacts and you making the offer. And that's why I believe the money is in the follow-up. Follow-up is fortune. So first off, here are some tips if you're capturing leads on your website. There's an underutilized page on your website, maybe more than one. If you want to know what that is, it's the confirmation page. You know that page where new opt-ins land while they wait for your confirmation email to arrive? And if you don't use a double opt-in and confirmation step, then it's the thank you page or the wraparound you have for your giveaway. For example, I just have a simple download where once they opt in, they get the link to download the report. But in the actual report, I have now a front page and a final page, which really wraps the content and takes people a little bit further than perhaps just giving them the downloadable. I realized I was leaving it to chance before. And recently I just redid that main lead magnet. So it provided a more personal touch and a call to action. Now, if your confirmation page says something like, thanks, now go check your email or worse, then, you know, you're using a double opt-in and setting your email program up to give you an extra hurdle, both filters and delays them actually getting something from you. So something like Aweber or lead pages is actually a message that's part of the default template. So really make sure that you do want it there. And look, you're missing a golden opportunity to take your prospect to the next step in their journey and building a relationship with you. After opting in, before they get the very first welcome email from you, that confirmation page is potentially the first exposure your new subscriber has to you. So it pays to make it a good one and create a favorable impression. That confirmation page is actually a place where you could be immediately offering a low cost product if that's a natural fit with your free giveaway. So it becomes an upsell and you'd be amazed at how many people actually are ready to take action. So you'll see sometimes on the digital funnels where you go to buy one product and then there's a little box that said, hey, do you want this other thing too? And really, you know, you can get a 30% of people actually opting in to get both. So the confirmation page we know from digital marketing is very important, but it's equally important, even if you don't have a, an upsell and a checkbox, it's equally important to realize that that's the first step. That's the first thing that people see with you. So you want to be doing a little bit more than, hey, just go check your email. In the case of a B2B prospecting strategy, your free offer is probably something like a short report or a case study, even a white paper. And think about your products, programs and services that lead on from that. Could you perhaps take a slice off as a first step to get a tangible result for clients and offer that as a paid product? Maybe it's simply a planning template or help with the project design stage. What will help your first contact make the most out of the free thing that you gave them that would extend, amplify or accelerate? That's the thing to offer on the confirmation or thank you page. And if you can offer a special pricing incentive, even better. But at the simplest, maybe that call to action is simply to get on a call and book a call with you. And the download page where you actually deliver your free thing is another often overlooked opportunity. Give your readers a relevant offer that ties in nicely with their download, or in this case, the gifts they're receiving. And you'll be pleasantly surprised at the number of takers you get. So you have a list of contacts. You've captured their name, email address, and maybe even a phone number or postal address too. Lots you can do with traditional print-based direct mail, in fact. But now let's talk about email and why email still works. If the real money is in the follow-up, email is still the most effective way to keep in touch with your contacts. And yes, I know that means you do need an email list, and I'll come back to that argument in a moment. 
While a lot of buzz is about how no one reads emails anymore and how much email ends up in the spam and the junk, it's still way more targeted and effective than most other marketing you can do. So your key job is to make sure that those people on the list want to hear from you, that when you email them, that it ensures your mail doesn't end up in their junk. So some of the confirmation page is about doing that, short, sharp instructions to help them know how to add you to their VIP contacts. But beyond that point, unlike social media, email is a place where most people check with serious intent several times a day. And they either skim read, read or hold things as unread to read later. Think about your own habits with email lists that you're on. If you're enjoying getting value from someone's messages, they stand out more. If you don't have time to read it when you see it, you may file them or mark them unread, something that helps you remember to go back, especially if you know they send long, thoughtful pieces. I love Seth Godin's emails and I've been a subscriber for years. They're short, sharp, sweet and very on point. They don't really educate me in any depth. They just give me a little inception of an idea yet always seem to land at just the right time. Other people I subscribe to provide me with really useful starting points that I can go and research in more depth, but some just feel thin or are too hypey, and I'll go through delete, delete, delete. And if I'm constantly doing that, it's no good to either the sender or me the receiver. After a while of continually just deleting someone's automated message, when I get a moment, I'll unsubscribe. And I'm guessing that's what a lot of people do. So you do have to be intriguing with your subject lines to get an open, insightful in your content so people read what you're sharing, and you've got to be intentional with your sequence. So there's a purpose behind each and every message. You're building a relationship via your communications, and you're hopefully getting them to lean in closer and closer as they get to know, like, and trust you. Now, yes, again, I know this still means you have a list and that you're messaging people. But my point here is that it's not about having a big list. If you have a high ticket offer and a small list of highly engaged prospects who want to hear from you, then those few contacts can still be very profitable. It's interesting that many of my clients don't have a list building system. They have a pipeline of contacts and reach out to them manually because they are targeted, hand-picked people that they've put on that list. Now, if you have 10 contacts in your pipeline and you're able to get on a call with them with a high-ticket offer where you've got a 50K proposal for your services or a 10K group program, you can close a very lucrative deal in one transaction. It may well take a few touch points and going back and forth with the client, But even so, it's a very different approach to having to make hundreds of phone calls. So when you get good at that direct B2B prospecting strategy, when you're selling into organizations, who needs a mass marketing list, right? Next, I want to share three promotional strategies you can't afford to ignore. If you're not yet ready to set up a funnel and email marketing system to build a list for sending automated messages, there are a few other ways that you can build a pipeline in order to connect with your ideal prospects. The first is LinkedIn publishing. Not so long ago, content marketers found great success by syndicating their content on sites such as Ezine Articles. I've used that a lot and I still have articles up there that generate leads for me and even in guest blog posts. The big Google changes of the past have put an end to those strategies, mostly because they negate duplicate content. So those still work in terms of article directories and guest blogging if your content is different. But there's one publishing platform that's kind of behind doors where you can syndicate without penalty, and that's LinkedIn. Now, if your audience is on LinkedIn, it's well worth checking out. In episode 44, my guest interview with Sophie Lechner, we talked a lot about the general environment of LinkedIn and how to behave on there in terms of relationship building. And one of the best ways to spend your time on LinkedIn is by liking, commenting and sharing people's content. People who would be good connections for your business. It gets you noticed. Now go one step further and start posting insights, ideas and valuable content on your own profile and you're in thought leadership territory. You can post long form updates complete with images, calls to action, keyword tags and more. 
and you can upload whole articles which stay on your profile as evergreen content. What happens then is that rather than you having to make a batch of connection requests that mostly get ignored, those people who notice you go view your profile and they start making connection requests to you. That's a far healthier start to the relationship because it's a sign they're aligned. Hey, they may even send you a message. Now, honestly, I don't even post much on LinkedIn these days and I still get connection requests and messages from people, some of whom have become partnerships or clients. As with all content marketing, though, the real key to making LinkedIn publishing work for you is consistency. The more content you release, the more you engage, the more results you'll see. The best results drive traffic directly to an opt-in page by including a link in your headline. Quite frankly, that's all I do. So the next promotional strategy I'll share with you is solo ads. Now, I used these years ago um, and it's really interesting because it's still something that really works. Getting a fellow business owner with a large mailing list to promote your offer can bring in a flood of new traffic, especially if that list owner is well respected and has a responsive list. And there are many ways to orchestrate this. So what are solo ads? Solo ads are email-based advertisements you buy from other email list owners. They're typically sent as dedicated emails. So the entire message is all about your promotion. While any business can make use of solo ads, they're most popular among affiliates and information marketers. But nowadays, also are platforms devoted to connecting buyers and sellers, even for B2B. So have a little look on Google. I haven't dived into it for a while, but um, I know that that's really been a great source of pipeline contacts for B2B businesses. Solo ads are a great way to drive traffic to your website or offer or whatever. I've used them to test a promo email and offer more than a general strategy, but it may be worth exploring depending on your business. Some list owners with a big list actually leverage their list as an additional income stream so you can benefit from access to their contacts. In fact, I remember a few big names I approached for my book launch who very kindly agreed to promote my book through their list and social media. How awesome is that? Now, solo ads are a little bit less of a favor because you're paying for the privilege. Finding the said list owner is another matter altogether, so you will have to do a little bit of research. And I haven't used it in a while, but a few years back, it was very effective for a few of my businesses. There's a great article, actually, I came across on solo ads, 31 tips for driving unlimited traffic from them. And I'll drop the link in the show notes page for this episode if that's something that would interest you. It certainly made me sit up and rethink solo ads again. So the next piece is guesting and referrals, and it's a great promotional strategy to leverage other people's lists, similar to solo ads, but obviously you're not paying necessarily. And it's really a question of having that courtesy and having that polite approach and really the philosophy of just ask. You know, people are often really willing to help you out, especially if, you know, what you do aligns with their values. My friend and guest way back in episode three, Andy Lopata, wrote an amazing book with that title, Just Ask, because we often don't go that direct route and approach people to refer us or give us an introduction. Likewise, you can approach people to guest on their podcast. It's an amazing way to get in front of the right audiences. Podcasts are really, really popular and it's a growing platform. And you'll be amazed at who listens to podcasts, including your lovely B2B peeps. Finally, I'll just share a book I found really helpful on the whole referral process, and that's Bob Berg's Endless Referrals. The clue is in the title. So let's just touch again on how a B2B prospecting strategy differs to B2C. Now, let's be clear, B2B prospecting can run very differently to when you're directly marketing to customers. And what you do is directly related to the person who will participate on your program or work with you. With B2B, you may be communicating with the person who makes the contract and purchase decision. They're not necessarily going to be a person on your program, on your course. And it's not the same focus, maybe not even the same friendly banter kind of style, but your B2B contact is still a human being, right? 
So in your content and messages, you want to trigger things they care about in their role and where the priorities for the organization are in their responsibility. Hopefully they took the job because they care about what the organization cares about and their values are aligned. And just as with a funnel for B2C, you can create a series of emails to go out after a subscriber joins your list. Or you may be sending them manually if you have high ticket offers and you're building a pipeline because you've developed this list of contacts to reach out to rather than attracting people onto a list. Your emails are the perfect place to make offers of relevant products and services, either yours or those of your event guests. You shouldn't use any hard sell tactics or pitch something in every message. Instead, send your subscribers valuable information that they can use. Help them get to know your values, why you do what you do. Share a few success stories working with clients like them. The aim is that they learn to look forward to your emails. Save the selling for your PS or for the occasional once per week or less promotional message. There's some final words. In my experience done right, these value-driven relationship building communication techniques can ensure you're not only going to earn back your investment in terms of time and energy creating a giveaway and reaching out to people, but you'll earn a tidy profit as well. B2B offers tend to be more high ticket than B2C offers. And people are far more likely to favor you if you're friendly, accessible, non-salesy and give value. Those terms are actually what many of my clients say about me. It's become kind of part of my brand. For instance, I shared a little while back that I don't do hard-hitting program launches and I busted some myths about the return on the effort of those big product launch strategies. People don't like those big salesy things and in B2B, it just doesn't work that way. So not only that, but these strategies These B2B prospecting strategies work for every opt-in offer on your site and for every email you send. So be sure to take a look at your other funnels and patch up any leaks that you might have. So that's it from me for today. I hope this has been useful. A little bit of of a scratch on the surface of the difference really with building a pipeline for B2B and building a list, which is more B2C. So Let me say what I said earlier as well, because I think this is really, really key. The approach you're taking here is to develop a pipeline of contacts to reach out to rather than attract people onto a list. And that's it. Uh, Any questions, please submit on the website at jayarson.com forward slash podcast. I'd love to hear from you. Take care. Ciao, ciao for now. Thank you for listening to the Leverage Business Podcast. Want to create leverage in your business? Did this episode provide some insights and ideas to be thinking through? If so, subscribe so you get alerts when the next one's released. If you want to learn more or would like help and support with building a leveraged business that achieves true freedom for you, then head over to jallison.com forward slash podcast to find all the resources and links that go with this show on my website and to join our iSuccess community. And if you're enjoying our content, it would be great if you could pop into Apple Podcasts or the app you listen from and leave me a rating and review. Everyone makes a difference to improving our rankings. So thank you if you've done that already. I appreciate you. So, hey, that's it. Thank you for listening. I hope you've loved this episode and have some great takeaways to be thinking through. I wish you a pleasant, productive and profitable week. And I'll see you again next time for another episode of the Leverage Business Podcast.